Hello, this is Lad May. I'm a senior consultant with Western Computer, and today we're going to take a look at approval workflows with signing limits using a position hierarchy. Our topics will be to build a position hierarchy for approvals. We'll identify the setups in human resources and system administration. We'll take a look at the setup for signing limits. And finally, we will identify the key workflow design elements involved. Your organization likely has an expenditure policy not unlike the one I'm showing on the screen at the moment. And you have two options for setting this up in approval workflows. One would be to build approvals into individual workflow designs using the user group assignments, or to use hierarchies such as the position hierarchy. The position hierarchy has the advantage of being reusable in approval workflows across modules and it's maintained by using the reporting structure defined in human resources. Let's look at the setup for this. First in human resources, we'll look at jobs, positions, and workers. And then we'll look at how that relates to the user setup in system administration. We'll take a look at the signing limit setup, and finally the workflow design itself. The first step is to set up jobs. And to do so, you'll go into Human Resources. You'll first need to set up titles, which is nothing more than a list of the titles of the workers in your company. And then you'll go into Jobs, and you will define for each job a job ID, a job description, and you'll assign the title. The next step will be to go into the Positions Setup in HR. You will set up one or more positions for each job as required. For example, you may have positions for five purchasing agents, all related to a single job record. And finally, you will define the report to position on each of those positions. So you'll need to construct this from the top down in order to record the report twos. The next thing you'll need to have in place are workers. You likely have workers set up already in your system as workers are required to support some other functionality. So the next step once you have workers is to assign workers to their respective positions. You'll do this by hiring the workers using the assignment to assign them to each of their respective positions. Once you've finished these steps, you'll have a position hierarchy. If you go to view it, it will look something like this. Your next step will be to look at the signing limits themselves. There's a signing limit parameter where you will set the limit basis as job. And then you have the signing limit policies themselves where you will define the policies and associate the job rules. I'm showing two screenshots here. The first one called default signing limit rule details You'll see I have set up a manager, director, VP, CFO, and president with different approval limits. My document type is the purchase requisition. This could have been also set up uh, even in the same form here for purchase orders, for expense reports, for invoices, and for travel requisitions. Once those are defined, I need to go in and associate jobs with each of these. And for example, if I select manager and click on job rule, you'll see this form in the bottom show up. And in this example, I have selected the managers that I want applied to this level of manager in my signing limit rules. The next step is probably already done. You just need to make sure that your users and system administration are associated with the worker record or with the party record that was generated by the worker record. So the user record will have a person record associated with it here. I'm going to assume you have some experience with a workflow designer. So we're going to jump directly to the workflow design 
and we'll take a look at the assignment type in the designer. We'll look at the hierarchy setup of assignment type. We will take a look at the hierarchy type. We'll select the start from in the hierarchy, and then we will look at the stop conditions. So here, I'm under assignment here in the workflow designer, and I'm on the hierarchy selection tab. For my hierarchy type, I'm choosing managerial hierarchy. The other one is a configurable hierarchy, which you can design in organization setup. But we're going to use the managerial hierarchy that we've been talking about. This refers, of course, to the position hierarchy in human resources. For my start from in this purchase requisition, I'm going to start at the requester level. So on the purchase requisition itself, we're going to have the requester, and that is where the hierarchy will start. The final piece that I have to have is one or more stop conditions. And I have several examples of stop conditions here. One would be that we're going to go up the hierarchy until the approver's limit is over the purchase requisition approval amount. We could do a stop, for example, go all the way up a hierarchy until we reach the title of president. Or we could say, I only want this to go up two levels from the requester. I only want it to go up to the requester's supervisor and to the next supervisor up in the chain. So these are just three examples of the kinds of stop conditions that you'll need to have in place. You must have at least one for the position hierarchy. Thanks very much for joining today. If you have questions or comments or need more information, please feel free to contact us at the email address or the phone number that's showing on the screen. Thanks very much.